Welcome to the Goddess Group. This is one of my most favorite things in the entire world to host. I absolutely love bringing beautiful, like-minded women together and sharing in an intimate evening. So this is a workshop style event. You don't have to feel like um, you can't ask questions or um, share how you're feeling. Please feel like you can, just pop up your hand. Um, and if you guys want to move forward from the back there, please feel free to come up a bit closer. So far away. Um, but before we get started, everyone raise their right hand really high in the sky. Okay, leave your hand up if you have an old story that you keep telling yourself that is stopping you from living your truth. Okay, alrighty. Probably 98% of the room. All right, hands back up. Leave your hand up if you have some sort of story that you know is no longer serving you. Yep, okay, and that was everybody. Leave your hand, put your hands back up. Leave your hand up if you would like to let go and make peace with old stories and your past and gracefully step into the future. Yeah, everyone. Awesome! <laughs> you guys are all in the right place because something that I want to share with you guys tonight is about making peace with your past so that you can fully step into the present moment gracefully and elegantly. For me, um, for a majority of my life that I had these old stinky stories that I constantly played on repeat all the time and they were stopping me from not only being my true self but really being happy. And um, it's so funny that these sorts of things are really brought up when you're around your parents. And this last week, I have been staying with my mom and dad and all of my old stories have come bubbling to the surface. All this old programming has just come bubbling right up and, and right in front of my face for me to look at it. And it's so funny because when we're not around them, we just like, yeah, I'm doing amazingly. And then you get in front of them and you're like, whoa, it's like right there. But those opportunities are opportunities for us to look at them and to move forward with them. And tonight I'm going to give you three ways that you can gracefully let go of the past and just be in this beautiful moment. I feel like the first and most important thing to making peace with your past is awareness. I feel like when you are aware of the old patterns that your mean girl tells you on a daily basis, you can then catch them. But if you're kind of walking around and you're not really aware of those stories, we are, it's like you're like in a room, a dark room, and you're trying to find the door in a pitch black room. But once you know your stories, once you know your triggers, that's the first step. That is where we need to start. And for so many years, I didn't even know my stories. I didn't know what I was telling myself. Uh, the biggest one for me was in my early 20s, I had my heart broken for the first time. I was in a beautiful relationship, what I thought was a beautiful relationship, but um, he was cheating on me. And it was like, I was gutted. I was devastated. I felt like my heart had been ripped out of my chest, thrown on the floor and stomped on. And I put my whole self into that relationship. And I really loved this guy. And uh, I showed up fully in that relationship and it's all perfect and everything unfolds exactly the way it's supposed to be but what happened in that situation was I put a padlock over my heart and then I started to replay the story that I'm unlovable. So from my early 20s all the way up I've just been replaying that same scenario over and over in my head. And there's no, no wonder I kept on attracting men that treated me like a doormat because I was treating myself like that. 
So this was a programming and a story that I kept telling myself. I'm unlovable, I'm unlovable, I'm unlovable because, well, if he cheated on me, I'm unlovable. So that was my, pro my programming that I constantly pressed play on all the time. Whenever I'd enter a new relationship, it was like, press play, I'm unlovable. So I attracted these sorts of men into my life. Until I started to do some little, some inner work and I went diving into stillness and inwardness that I realized and I became aware of this story that everything started to shift for me. So just by being aware of the story that you keep telling yourself, you're halfway there. Uh, then I used to tell myself um, in my early 20s, I also fell really sick with, um, I had chronic fatigue and thyroid problems. I got a really bad case of the cold sore virus and I had cold sores all over my face, in my mouth and down my throat. And I was in hospital for a week and I was healing for about three years afterward. But because of that story, I always told myself I'm never going to feel vital and well again. So that's something that I kept on pressing replay with my health. It was, I'm never going to feel strong and healthy again. And I grew up being a professional, uh, not grew up, but I was a professional dancer and I grew up dancing all my life. So feeling strong and vital was something that I was really used to. But because of that experience, I created this story that I kept on playing all the time in my head. Whenever I would feel like I was getting a little bit sick, oh my God, I'm gonna get chronic fatigue. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go back to that place. But what helped me move through that was awareness and making peace with those stories. And then with my wealth, you know, I grew up watching my parents like flog it out. They were so, you know, you've got to work hard. You've got to make ends meet and you've got to really push to make anything happen. So what did I do? I went out and I pushed and I really, really, um, you know, put, put myself in situations that weren't ideal because I thought that's what you had to do. I thought you had to do work in jobs that you didn't like. I thought you had to put yourself in situations that weren't your truth in order just to make money. So that's some more unlearning and reprogramming I had to do. Uh, and it all started with awareness of the stories that I was telling myself from the past. Now, everything that happens to us in our past is, is so powerful because it shapes us, but it's not, it doesn't define us. You know, going bankrupt or getting divorced or getting ill, whatever's happened over here in the past has all led you to where you are right now. And it's just shaping you and allowing you to grow. And that doesn't mean that, you know, those things, that we just dismiss those things. It's, it's about bringing your awareness to it and then going, okay, well, what is my lesson in the heartbreak or in the illness or in the bankruptcy? What is my lesson? What is my little nugget in this? And I think if we can bring awareness to those stories that we keep telling ourselves, we are halfway there. So in saying that, I just want you all to reflect for a moment on a couple of stories that you might still be keeping alive or that you are keeping alive. Like, you, oh, yeah, you're like, yeah, I know. That one is really loud. So just take a moment and maybe if you've got a journal, maybe jot it down or type it in the notes in your phone and just do some dot points with the different stories. Maybe you could do one around health, you could do one around wealth and you could do one around your love. And if you don't have any, 
Brilliant. Put your hand up and I'll come give you a high five. <laughs> so yeah, just think about a couple that you know are really, that are still there. Maybe there's an old one lurking that just will not let up. Alrighty. Would you like to share? Yes. Yep. Share one of yours. Yep. Um, mine has been I'm not enough, and yep. the story you tell about picking men that are wrong for you, I'm one of those. So, yep. so I'm now a single mum with a 12 week old baby because I picked a wrong man. So, yeah, want to shift that. Yes. Yep. Awesome. And have you, like, just newly become aware of this, this thought pattern? does that? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But you can internally shift. Yeah, you can internally fix and shift how you perceive the situation. Awesome. Who else? Yes. Yeah. Um, professional. Mm -hmm. So not feeling, yeah, confident in your career, so you can move forward. Mm hmm. It's a goodie. Who else feels like that? Yeah. Okay. Do you want to share, Lisa? Sure. I've, I've got a few, but some of you all might be able to relate to this one. Feeling time poor, but we don't mm -hmm. have enough time. Mm -hmm. Whether that's time or energy. Mm -hmm. Just feeling like I've got these things I want to do, and if only there were 25 days in a week, <laughs> yeah. I could tick off my to do oh, list. Yes. And then if I don't tick off my to do list, really kind of being hard on myself for not getting through that list. Oh, yeah. Yep. Who's hard on themselves when they don't finish their to do list? Yep. <laughs> Everyone. Would you like to share? Which one? <laughs> and which one? Um, my biggest one at the moment is probably my health and using it as an excuse why I can't do things or, yeah, and, yep. And yeah. I've been down the whole road not feeling like I could be loved because I went through a big relationship breakup too, but now very happily married and a little boy, so yeah. I yeah. now know everything does happen for a reason, but I think there's still little negative things in there that keep creeping up and yeah yeah yep. sometimes it doesn't matter how hard you're pushing down they keep coming back <laughs> yeah well are you when are you aware when they come up um yeah yeah yep. sometimes maybe not until a bit later on maybe yep. not right in that moment but yeah <laughs> so this is what i really want you guys to get good at is bringing your awareness to when you press play on I'm not smart enough to start my own business. I'm not lovable enough. I'm not healthy enough, whatever it is. When you are so crystal clear and you bring awareness to those stories that we've written down, you can then take action. But we have to get really clear on what we're actually saying to ourselves. Otherwise it's a bit wishy-washy and it's like, oh, we're just not clear. Like I literally write it out. I write out what my mean girl says to me. And it's usually, yeah, I'm not good enough. I'm not smart enough. I'm not skinny enough. I'm not wealthy enough. I'm not whatever enough. 
And we all have that internal dialogue, every single one of us. If anyone tells you they don't, don't believe them and run in the other direction <laughs> because every single person has it. And it really breaks my heart because us women are so hard on ourselves. This is one of the reasons why I wanted to create this sacred, beautiful space to bring like-minded women together, but also so you know when you're not alone. You are not alone. And don't think that I'm standing up here and I don't have those voices. I do. But I just have gotten stronger and stronger, like going to the gym and working your biceps. I've gotten stronger and stronger at shining the awareness spotlight when those stories come up. And that's what we've got to get really good at. That's where we have to start. So who else would like to share? Would you like to share yours? Yeah. And now that you are really aware that that's your pattern, the next step in this little equation, this three-step equation that, that has worked for me is letting it go. Yeah. It's not easy. And I'm not going to stand here and go, it's, it's easy. Science takes courage and practice and commitment to yourself. Commitment to living your truth and being your beautiful, amazing goddess, authentic self. And it is like, if I have to do this for the rest of my life to help women, I will freaking do it. Like I will scream from the rooftops. Everything I do is to inspire women and to help women realize how truly beautiful they really are. Because if you actually knew that there is nothing wrong with you, like how many of you really know that there's nothing wrong with you? Put up your hand. Really? Really? You are all perfect, whole, amazing, unique, beautiful, powerful goddesses.